Thank you. I'm Mr. Leaner, and welcome back to Mr. Leaner's Math Extravaganza. Don't be alarmed that I'm wearing the same shirt and tie I was in the first video. It's the same day. Yes, I did take a shower. Yes, I do change clothes each day. But let's take a look at Investigation 1.2. And what we're going to focus on is mode and range. So we're going to take a look at the frequency tables that we looked at in 1.1 and just take it a step further and figure out, well, what is mode? What is range? How do those help us? And then looking at what is a cluster or what is a gap in a data set. So let's take a look at the first problem. I have our frequency table from 1.1 up here, which was our favorite Chicago teams. Um, and we're going to take a look at this data and determine, well, what is range? How do I find it? But then what does it mean? So it's not just okay to be like, oh yeah, I know how to find the range. That's great. Well, what does it actually, what does the range tell me? And exactly the same thing for the mode. What is mode? And then what does it really tell me to help us really understand this data set? So again, we're looking at our sports teams on the side here. Again, no surprise that the Cubs only have um, one vote. We all know that the Sox are definitely better than the Cubs. So that should maybe not be so surprising to us. Uh, we also see, like, again, the Blackhawks had the highest with four. Uh, maybe being the Stanley Cup champions maybe helped them out a little bit there. But let's get into the range. So to find the range, you need to take the highest amount or the greatest amount of our frequency and subtract it by the lowest amount or subtract the lowest amount from it, I should say. So our greatest frequency here was four and the lowest I saw or the least was one. So if I subtract four minus one, that's three. Not so bad. But what does the three actually tell us? Well, it's very helpful actually in a data set. When I look at the three, the three tells you that the numbers in your data set are gonna be clustered or close together. So if I were to look at this data set, I see three, one, two, two, and four. All those numbers are within three numbers of each other, or three spaces in between. So if I was looking at this data, it would be clustered together. Now you might say, well, Mr. Wainer, I could just look at the data set and see it. It's pretty easy. Why do I need to find range? Well, yeah, you're right. There's only one, two, three, four, five data pieces in here. What if I gave you a data table that had 100 pieces of data, or 1,000 pieces of data? You'd want to not have to count every single one on here, or you'd have to look at your frequency to figure this out. And again, if I was looking at a, say, a data set of 1,000, and I found a range of 300, you'd probably find some gaps because the bigger the range is, the more spaced out your numbers could be in your data set. And we'll talk more about that as we work through our investigations. Then if you look at mode in the bottom, mode is just a fancy word for most often, or the data number that you see that happens the most. So I'm looking at this data set here. I noticed that two occurred twice. The most popular vote was two. It doesn't mean the Bears and the Bulls are the most popular team, because the Blackhawks had more votes, but two was the vote number that occurred most often. So in this question, uh, mode would be two. Again, just finding the one that occurs most frequently. Okay. My favorite part of the video, I hope it's yours too, it is now your turn to try a problem. I have posted up our favorite colors again, uh, but I've changed the frequency around a little bit. Uh, our slash marks, we don't have the little five across for uh, the spiffy looking number five on the computer. So I just put our tallies, each one is one, counting all the way throughout, uh, and our frequency here on the side. What I'd like you to do is to find the range, think about what the range tells you and how it helps you with the data set, and then find what the mode is. So I know you already got the pencil and paper ready to go. Go ahead and pause the video and we'll see what you come up with. Okay, taking a look at our range. Our highest frequency was 12. Our lowest frequency was one. So 12 minus one is 11. 12 minus one is 11. What does that mean though? I like the way you guys are thinking out there today. 11 tells us that this data is spread out a little bit. If I look, there's a data as high as 12, there's a data that's as low as 1, there's also a data here that's at 8, which is kind of uh, almost in the middle between uh, the two there. So as I look at this data set, if I was comparing this data frequency table to the first one, this data is more spread out or is going to have more gaps than the first table because the first table only had a range of 3. Then looking at the mode at the bottom, Hopefully I didn't trick you guys. If we look at our data set, I see that one occurs twice and eight occurs twice. So in this case, there are actually two modes. One and eight both occurred the most often, they both occurred twice. Now I could have three modes or four modes, 
It depends on your data set. Or sometimes you might have no mode. If this was a seven and this was a two, there'd be, everything would occur once. I wouldn't list every single number as your mode. There would just be no mode. So hopefully as you're looking at the data set here, you were able to see that one and eight occurred the most often. And again, as we get more into this data with frequency tables, looking at range, looking at mode, you will see how this helps you in real life situations. If we were taking votes, say on like the cafeteria food, and I wanted to have 300 students try this out, looking at the data set would be really helpful for, let's say our cook to figure out what to serve students. I might say that, wow, 113 people really want pizza on Fridays. And you might say that's a great idea. Or you might see ice cream day, which I know Mr. Lanner would love because he loves food. Uh, they might say, let's get an ice cream day on Tuesday. And we could look at the data set to find out what is the most popular lunch choices of students. So it's not that you're just doing the math to do it, but these things can help you guys in real life situations, even as sixth graders. Thank you for tuning in to Mr. Lanner's Math Extravaganza. As always, we'll see you next time.